There is a surprise coming in the heavens this fall. Hardly ever do we get a chance to announce a coming nova or a new star. Normally they are a surprise, but we can see this one coming and where it is and when it's happening and what it means is certainly of interest to those people who are looking for the coming of the Messiah. My name is Dr. Dale Sides. I am the president and founder of Liberating Ministries for Christ International and an avid Bible student and a Christological astronomer. And I have some information to bring to you today that's relevant to Bible prophecy, perhaps, being fulfilled right before our eyes. And it's going to take place relative to a new star that's going to appear in the heavens this coming fall. In beginning this, I'd like to recognize a fellow Bible teacher, Nelson Walters, and his contribution to my knowledge of this field. I was aware of the NOVA, but in listening to his teachings and sharings on it, it's opened the door for me to consider a lot of other things, some of which I have accepted and some of which I'm still considering. However, thank you, Nelson, and your team for the work that you do. And I'd just like to say this to all of the people that have an interest in biblical or Christological astronomy. I'm so thankful to see the upsurgence and interest in it and for more and more people to be consulting the Astro Logos or as far as looking at the Word of God in the heavens. It's necessary as we believe that we are in these end times. We'll see more and more of these signs appearing as this is. Now, to get to this, this is a nova or a new star. So what is that? Well, in this situation, it's where two stars, one is feeding hydrogen off of another one, and there's such an accumulation of it that a big explosion takes place. And it's recurring, and we can tell, we know from the measure of the years approximately when this eruption is going to take place. Now, usually novas are supernovas, which that means whenever a star implodes, and then cre reaches critical mass and then explodes outwardly with a burst of light. This one is like a thermonuclear explosion or, or hydrogen bomb more specifically because there's a giant red and a small white star. That's, uh, the small white is siphoning hydrogen off the giant red one. And when it has a sufficient amount to make a bomb, it goes kapoof, kapoom. In an explosion, it's hard for us to imagine that it would be seen 3,000 light years away before I go any further. God thought enough of the future to send us this message 3,000 years ago to have it arrived right on time. Think we should pay attention? So when you're looking at astronomical events, the first thing you ask is, where is it taking place? Then secondly, when is it taking place? And thirdly, what does it mean? What does it mean? So in this particular situation, where this is taking place is in the constellation of Corona Borealis, or the Northern Crown. And this Northern Crown uh, is quite significant in biblical prophecy because it's mentioned, it's described in Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, and two and three and four, specifically verses three and four, uh, says, And behold, another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And then it says, And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. And we see this fulfilled here on the chart because here is the dragon that is, and here is the crown that is on the dragon or the serpent's head right here. Not dragon, but serpent right here. And you see this is the same serpent that's standing before the woman here in, in her giving birth right here. But then this crown is describing it. It has seven seven diadems, seven crowns here, and it's on the head of the serpent. And you see the serpent here is being controlled by Ophiuchus. Here's the tail that draws a third of the part down. And then he's controlling this, not allowing this serpent 
to gain the crown. Now, that's where it's taking place. Now, this nova is a neo, naked eye observation, and it can be seen with the naked eye. And where it is, is in Corona Borealis. And the way you find Corona Borealis is you find Arcturus. And Arcturus is on the knee of Botes. And you connect it with the bright star of Vega. And Arcturus and, and, and between Arcturus and Vega, you'll cross right across the top of the crown. That's how you find it in the heavens. And it'll be about as visible as the North Star. Uh, that magnitude. So it's not real, real bright, but it's definitely visible. That's another reason that I think that this may represent the Antichrist because it's not very bright. <laughs> so there you go. And it's in a specific place in the heavens where we need to pay particular attention. Anytime the Bible starts talking about crowns, we should pay attention. And especially because it's talking about rulership, it's also talking about rewards. And so, one of the applications of this particular uh, portrayal is that there's the, an additional light that's going to shine here, giving emphasis to this. Let me say to you individually, it says to you, beware lest any man take your crown. So you guard the crown that God has given you and let no man take it from you. However, I think that this has got a much more deep impact as we look at this uh, and this is perhaps that this is the sign of the coming of the anti-messiah, the Antichrist. The reason I say that is because there was a supernova at the coming of Christ three-fourths of the way down the vertical stipe of the, of the cross, the northern cross. This is in the northern crown, okay? But the first one that took place it's a supernova. This is a nova, and it's a recurrent nova, which is very interesting because it recurs about every 80 years. And the, the, it happened before again. And in this particular situation, the last time it took place was in 1946. But we see from the hydrogen exchange that it's due to happen and erupt this fall. Interesting, 2024. And, I, and here, and I, know, I owe a lot of this explanation to Nelson Walters and his team for their interpretation of this. But as you look at this and you compare this to the seven diadems to Revelation chapter 17 about the beast that has carried the woman that's got seven heads. Let's go there. Let me read it to you for a second. And then I want to talk to you more about the meaning of this. When we see in Revelation chapter 17... Verse 7, why did you marvel? I'll tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carried her, which has seven heads and the ten horns. The beast which you saw was and is not, and will descend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. Here's the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. These are the seven kings. So those seven stars, representative of the crown of, of the serpent, represent seven, seven stars or seven kingdoms. And so five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue for a short time. The beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth and is of the seventh and is going to perdition. The reason that we're looking at this so closely is because this is the eighth light in that crown, which will come for just a duration and then it will go away. So that's why I'm thinking it's the sign of the anti-Messiah because it's a sign of a false crown, of a false inheritance, and of thievery of that which really belongs to Jesus. He's the one that wears the crown. He's the king. He's the one that will open the seven seals, not the anti-Messiah. And he will be a counterfeit. So what's significant about this is that the last time that this took place was 1946. And this coming year of 2024, that 78 year span there, what's significant about those two days and about the kingdoms that are of this world? 1946 was the last time that this nova appeared and that it, it appeared at the beginning of the founding of the United Nations. And the United Nations evolved out 
of the League of Nations, which was dissolved so that United Nations could exist. And, th and this is all about a world empire, this rule over particularly Israel, but also the entire world. And what we're looking at here, the coming of the anti-Messiah, this coming year 2024, the United Nations is scheduled to appear to vote on several referendums. Number one, do they have sovereignty over the individual nations in light of making decisions? I was thinking today how interesting it is that after World War I and World War II, they decided, boy, we have, we have to have a United Nations so that we won't have any more world wars. This is a focal point of coming down to the one world government and the one world ruler. I don't believe that God has left himself without a witness. I think he's told us in the heavens that this is going to happen. But of course, you may say, well, why is this is happens every 78, every 80 years? Why is this significant? Because in May of 1948, the clock began, the prophecy clock began ticking when Israel was restored as a nation. I personally believe that the devil did that, but what the devil meant for evil, God, God is going to use for good. And I really, and, 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 and around those that are around me, I'm, I'm imploring all of you to pray for Israel. They need to seriously repent and come to their knees for what they did to the Messiah. And they're going to need to do this. Two-thirds of them may die before the one-third of them will confess what they've done. But anyway, I pray for them. And I'm not in condescension, not in anger, but I pray that they wisen up and obey God and listen to Him. Nonetheless, these are signs that are in the heavens. Now, this is not astrology. This is reading the heavens for the message that's Christologically embedded in all the constellations. And we see them cross-referenced in the Bible. We see the serpent, the dragon of old, the devil, right? We see the crown, right? We see the cross, right? We see the serpent, we see the table. All of this is written in the Bible, and especially in the book of Revelation. There's so many of these celestial imageries given that you need to know those and understand those to be able to interpret the message. So. Whether this is the case or not, whether this is the coming of the Antichrist or not, we're absolutely not sure. We see through a glass darkly, and we admit that there's things that we suspect, and we're looking to see if they're fulfilled. However, when we look at the numbers of things that's happened, especially since the sign of the woman being fulfilled in September 23rd, 2017, uh, as we look at the past seven years that's taken place and, and all the events that's unfolded, I really can see that the beginning of the birth pangs happened at that sign and that fulfillment in the heavens. And we're continuing to see them unfold. And as we see the seals open, we're going to see more celestial unfolding and more celestial fulfillment. You know, come quickly, Lord Jesus, is our cry. And perhaps we should be looking forward to the coming and the incidences that are surrounding this because the incidences surrounding the end of time is this is a message that God is sending to the world. I ain't happy with the way you treated my son. And I'm not real happy with the way you've rejected me. You will pay, you will bow. And so the good idea is why don't you do it now because one way or the other we all will bow our knee to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the King of glory. The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament shows His handiwork. Day into day, they utter speech. Not in tonight they show knowledge. There is no speech, no voice under heaven where their voice is not heard. Surely He has set a tabernacle in them for the sun, which rejoices as the bridegroom that runs out of the bedroom chamber and as the strong men to run the race. That's the sun going through the heavens. And all the, the keys to interpreting the heavens are contained within them. So let me encourage you to stay on your knees and stay after Jesus and keep your eyes in the sky. Look up. Your redemption draws nigh. All these signs are telling us that we're living in the end times and things will unfold and we will see the coming of the Lord. Come quickly, Lord Jesus.